Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another CMake video. We're gonna be creating a library, but not just the simple target library that you may be used to if you've worked with CMake before, uh, but we're actually gonna go through the steps of configuring and exporting any scripts necessary so that other developers can easily find our library and link against it. Uh, by just using the CMake add library command, you're just creating one uh, for within your build tree, but we're gonna be looking at how to actually set it up so that it can be built, installed, and properly found by other projects. The process isn't crazy, it takes a little bit of setting up, but uh, we're gonna go through everything step by step, and you'll see that it's not that hard or convoluted as uh, it might seem otherwise. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing that I wanna quickly show is the actual code that we're gonna be compiling. In this case, it's this one function here called do amazing. It's declared inside of this header file here, and it's defined inside the CPP. This is obviously really basic. It's not really doing anything useful clearly, but this is gonna be the actual library code that we're gonna be compiling. Obviously in your projects, you're gonna have far more things, but the principles that I'm gonna be showing today are gonna to apply regardless. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a library, we're gonna compile this code, and then we're gonna export that library so that it can be installed and then quickly used by another project. The next thing to show here is the actual CMake list file. We're gonna go in order. Uh, it's pretty straightforward at the beginning. We've got our minimum required version, our project name, and the fact that we're using C++. But the first thing that uh, I wanna point out really is this add library call here which sets the name of our target. So we're creating a library target within CMake and specifying what compilation units are a part of that target. In our case, it's just that one CPP file with the function definition. Uh, so what CMake will do when it sees this is it'll actually generate build information so that this target can be compiled using these uh, compilation units, these source files. The next bit of code here is the set target properties, which takes the target that we just created, this library, just above here. And we're setting some properties so that CMake can export some compilation target information. Uh, in our case here, we're telling it that it needs to notify the compiler that we're using the C20 standard. So what CMake is gonna do when it generates the actual build whether that's Make or a Visual Studio project or an Xcode, whatever the generator is that we're using, what CMake is gonna do is it's gonna export whatever flags need to be passed to our target to specify that we're using C20 and that the actual standard is required. The next thing to note is this include here. So we've got the include GNU installers. So that's including a, a module into our CMake list file, which is simply just providing a bunch of variables that we're gonna be using. So I'll explain this in a second. It's important to understand how target include directories works because we're using something called generator expressions to signal to CMake that depending on the context of which we're actually working with this library, whether we're building it or linking to it from an installed location, uh, we need a different path for our includes. So in the case where we're building it, we're using the build interface and we should have the current source directory as our include path. What that means is that the current CMake list file is the current source directory. In this case, that's just the root of the project. That gets added to the list of include paths when we're compiling our source files. Now, if we build and install our library, the structure of the files looks different. We have an include directory, which is where our public headers are added. And the way that looks is something like this. This is actually, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but this is what that uh, directory structure looks like once we actually install it on disk. And you'll see inside of the uh, include directory, we have useful.h, which we've copied, and I'll show you how that happens further in. This is the public header that users of our library are supposed to be able to find and include into their project so they can actually call the functions and use the types that we're exposing with our library. That's why we're including the CMake install include directory here, which is coming from this module here, so that we can say in the case where you're using the installed version, this should be the include path that's available to you. The next bit here is actually uh, doing two things. One, it's actually configuring our target and the actual install paths that are gonna be used when we actually end up installing it. And this is basically, again, using the standard install uh, paths that were imported from this GNU installers include up here, this module. 
So these are all the standard, uh, for example, the, the lib directory, the include directory, the bin directory. Anybody who's worked on a Unix-like system will probably be familiar with these paths. Like you might have slash user local bin or lib or include uh, share, right? Like you have all of these standard Unix paths, which are uh, actually what CMake prefers. And it likes to look into those types of paths when it's trying to find header files or lib files. So when we actually finish working on our library and we go to install it, this is what's going to tell CMake how to actually set up all those different files within our project so that they can be installed appropriately. The next thing we want to look at is this export very useful targets bit right here. What that's doing is it's taking this target that we've created up to this point and that we've configured with all of this information and it's creating an export target that can be imported by another part of our project or another project altogether. And the way that this actually gets used is if you look over here, is uh, we're actually going to be exporting that export target. We're going to be installing that file uh, or rather that information into this file, this very useful targets.cmake. And CMake, based on this namespace qualifier here, is actually going to prefix all of our targets with very useful colon colon. It's important to include the colons here because they're a convention that CMake uses to provide further diagnostics and information about that import target. But uh, because we specified this namespace, what CMake is going to do is it's going to take this target that we've configured up until this point, our library, and it's going to export all the relevant information about it into this very useful targets.cmake. It's going to qualify all of that information, all of those targets, in our case is just one, with very useful colon colon, that's the namespace. And it's going to write that file, this file here, it's going to write it into this destination. And that destination is the standard lib folder. We imported this from our new installers. If you remember up here, that's where that becomes available. It's going to place that file into lib CMake and another folder called very useful. And I'm going to show you what's actually in there. If we go here, what we're going to end up with is uh, and ignore some of the other files, but we're going to end up with this one targets CMake uh, script, which is actually going to contain all the important information for our exported target so that other projects can import it and make use of it. We skipped over this install files bit uh, because I wanted to explain this first since it was tied to the part before. But what we're doing is we're actually taking our useful.h and we're installing that file, meaning we're copying that file from our source directory into our include directory. Uh, the reason we do that is because useful.h has the declaration for our function that we want users to be able to call. So that is our public include header. So in order for people to actually know about our function, they need to know about our namespace and the function declaration itself. So uh, needless to say, they need to be able to have access to that header file, making it a public header that they can use. So in order for that file to end up where it needs to be inside the include directory, we have to actually install it and uh, CMake will copy it for us when we install. Uh, if we had multiple header files that we needed to expose as our public headers, then we would have white space separation here. It could be you know space or new lines or however uh, you want to list them. Uh, but that would be all listed under here. And as you'll see inside our include directory, this is the useful.h file that we actually end up installing or copying into this directory, uh, which will be available to users through this install interface include path. So this include path will be added to their uh, include paths when they're using the installed library and our include file will be in there for them to actually bring into their project. So at this point, we've created our library, we've listed our actual source code, we've configured our target, uh, we've copied, we've, we've told it how to actually install the public headers so that users of our library can actually uh, look up our header files. But we haven't actually made this easily findable. So somebody could actually take our library now and point to our, um, our targets.cmake file and import it that way, but that's not the most portable way to do things. What we want to do is we want to create a configuration file which tells CMake how to actually find and import our targets. And it's a script that CMake can use so that when one of our users uses the find package command, they'll actually be able to find and look up all the information needed 
uh, including all dependency information and all of that stuff for our actual library. So I'll show you how that works. A very important thing to talk about is how CMake actually finds things. And in the traditional way, CMake has provided these find files uh, for hundreds, if not more, thousands perhaps, I'm not quite sure, of the most common packages that are used in, uh, in the CMake world. And that's not very sustainable because they can't possibly provide find packages for every library out there that users might want to use. There's endless libraries on GitHub or other platforms that you might want to bring into your source code and use uh, or, or install in your system rather and use and CMake can't can be expected to have a find script for all of those. So the new way of doing things is that the actual library authors themselves, like us, are going to be putting together these config files, these package config files, so that they are actually giving all of the information that's needed to import these libraries into other projects so that the CMake team doesn't have to distribute these fine packages anywhere. Everything is done by convention. So we're just generating our config file, telling CMake where to find the installed version of our library. And then CMake looks up the configuration and pulls everything in as needed. Ultimately, this config file is generated. Uh, the targets file is generated as, as you saw up here. Um, so we don't actually have to be too specific and explicit about what we're doing. We just have to make sure that things are named accordingly and things are installed where they need to be. And uh, so let's get into it. In order to produce our config file, what we need to first do is include the CMake package config helpers module, which gives us access to the configure package config file function. And what that function does is it takes this input file, which is sort of like a template, and produces this output file, which is our actual configuration file. And here we're signaling where that file is going to be installed, which would end up being inside of lib, CMake, very useful. And then we have our uh, config file here. You can ignore these for now, but this is the file that it'll end up producing. And if we take a look at it, if we take a look at the input first, we have this package init portion here which is just something that CMake unpacks into some validation code that it wants at the beginning of, uh, of packages. And we don't really need to go over that right now, but it just does some checking to make sure that things are the way they need to be in order for this package to actually get imported. The next thing that we do is we include our targets file, which is the exported information about our library, the CMake library that we're uh, putting together. So all the include paths and any other details around our CMake library. And uh, we're bringing that in to the package config. So after that, we have this check required components call, which if our library used components, if it was a bigger library that was split up into various components, this would make sure that the component that is being asked for by the users of our library actually exists within our library. Now, we're not actually doing any components for this library because it's just a small demo. But if we were making a larger library and we had components set up, then we would need to have something like this if we wanted to provide feedback to our users if they spelled something incorrectly or requesting a component that doesn't exist. I'll do a separate video on how to set that up, but I just wanted to put this in here uh, because it's a good practice to have it anyways in case you decide to uh, actually add components to your library. The find dependency portion here is um, something that we're going to visit later on in the video, but just so you understand why it's there, it's a way for us to signal to downstream projects, projects that are trying to use our library, that a specific library is required for them to have as well. So in our case here, I've said that the Zlib library is a public dependency of our library so that anybody who's trying to use our library, any project that's trying to link against the library that we're making must also have Zlib on their path installed somewhere on their computer and CMake needs to be able to find it. Of course, once we've set all of this up, it's important to actually test it and make sure we can install our library. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the Visual Studio Developer prompt. So in my case, I'm using a uh, terminal and I've got the developer prompt set up here and I run that. And what that does, and I'll just show you what it does actually real quick, is it actually sets it up with the Visual Studio Developer tool chain. Um, so that I can actually compile code and run CMake and all that stuff. Now, if you're using something like MingGW or other compilers, 
uh, we, we can't possibly cover every type of tool chain here, but essentially uh, if you have CMake and a C++ compiler uh, or a C, C compiler, depending on what you're working on, but uh, you'll need to have some sort of command prompt so that you can actually run CMake and CMake and find your compiler. In our case, like I said, we're using the Visual Studio developer command prompt, uh, but the steps are the same regardless, even if you're on Mac OS and Linux and you just want to install the library somewhere. So uh, here we have uh, our actual, uh, our projects. So we're going to go inside of the CMake library and just list the files. And you'll see this is what we saw earlier. We have our source directory. We have our CMake list.txt uh, and the input file and all that. So what we want to do is we want to run CMake s for the source directory. So this is going to be our CMake list directory. And that's going to be CMake library. And we're going to say dash B for our build directory. And I'm going to do this build directory. We're going to say CMake library, and we're going to run that. And what CMake is going to now do is it's going to configure a build for our uh, build config for our uh, library. So we're going to actually be able to compile our library. And uh, in this case here, um, we're using, like I said, the Visual Studio compiler. So I found it and we're going to be able to compile. So if we do then CMake, oops, if we do CMake dash dash build and we specify the build directory, right? So now we're actually telling CMake to run the build command and we're going to hit enter. What CMake is going to do is it's actually going to build it. And as you can see here, it's going through our CMake lists. It's uh, compiling our CPP file. Uh, it's also generating some build configuration that the compiler can read in, but we don't need to look at that because we're working directly with CMake, which is what we want. Uh, and it's producing this lib file inside of the debug directory. Now, you can, with Visual Studio at least, you can specify dash dash config. And if I type release, it's actually going to build it for release. So if we're actually creating a release version of our library, uh, let's go ahead and actually uh, let's do that for the rest of the demonstration. We're going to build a release version, which is not going to include any of the debug simples. Now, this dash dash config option here is only available for Visual Studio or uh, or the Visual C compiler, because with uh, with CMake traditionally, you have to actually configure your build differently. And I've done videos. You should take a look at the rest of my videos. I will probably put one in the description of how to actually install libraries. And there's a lot more details on uh, the various things. But uh, essentially, you would have to set up when you're configuring the build, you would have to set up whether it's a debug or release build. And then when you go to install it, it's going to install either the debug or release uh, version. So in our case, we're, we build it for release one more time for good luck. And then what we can do is uh, do CMake dash dash install and we're going to point to the build directory and we're going to say dash dash config we're installing the release version and we're going to say slash slash prefix we're going to say where we want to actually install it so in my case i'm going to put it inside of my s which is my developer drive sdks and i have a testing directory uh, over here and i'm going to hit enter and what cmake does is it goes through all of the things that we talked about earlier and it installs all of those files. So it's installing our lib. It's uh, if you remember, so I've already got it installed, so it says up to date, but it's in, it's trying to install the header file that you saw. It's installing all of the scripts that we uh, that we asked it to install in order for uh, our package to actually uh, exist as a findable package. So, of course, in order to get this demonstration to the end, we also want to actually create a little project that tries to use our library to make sure that everything I'm showing in this video is actually applicable. So in this case, I've made this little uh, project, this application console application called CMake library user. And what it's doing is it's just importing our header file, our useful.h, and uh, it's trying to call do amazing, which should print the word amazing. Uh, but uh, if you work in Visual Studio, or if you're doing this from the, the command line, what you would see is that there's an error in trying to actually configure this application. So if we actually look at the CMake list file, we'll see that it could not find a package configuration file provided by very useful. And it's what it's looking for is one of these 
types of files one, or uh, a file named in one of these two ways. So if you recall, we actually produced this configuration file and it's uh, we know that it's in there because it is inside of our lib directory. We have uh, this file right here, the very useful config.cmake, which is exactly what cmake is looking for when we try and do find package. It can't find it because we have to help CMake uh, in order so that, uh, in order for it to know where it's looking for these files. So if we take a look at the CMake presets.json file, uh, and you can do this from the command line if you do uh, CMake dash d CMake prefix path equals, and you specify the path or list of paths for uh, where CMake should be looking for these packages. But in our case, because we're actually using Visual Studio, the way we're doing it is we're going to use the CMake presets.json file. Now, there's also another file uh, called CMake user presets where you should really be putting this stuff. And I'll do another video on that. Uh, uh, so look out for that. Please subscribe. But uh, essentially, just to keep this demo moving, we're going to put this in here. Uh, and we're going to say CMake prefix path. And this is going to be the package prefix path where it should search. And we're going to specify our path right here. This is where we installed the package. And we're going to do this. And because it's Windows um, and paths have this slash, we actually have to switch it to this slash because otherwise it's going to treat it as an escape character in the string. So now that we've told CMake where our library is and we click generate, we'll see that we actually have another error. And uh, what's happening is it's we're finding our library. We've built it, we've installed it, and users can now find it once we provide the CMake, CMake prefix path. But our library has a requirement. If you recall, we've said that anybody who pulls in our configuration script needs to have Zlib. And because we haven't told our project here where to find Zlib installed, um, now, this wouldn't be an issue on something like Linux where you might install it as a system package. It'll just find it automatically. But because we're on Windows and those standard paths don't exist uh, in quite the same way, uh, we have to be a little bit more helpful to CMake. So uh, we click Generate and we see that it's, uh, it's actually complaining about not being able to find Zlib. And I'm going to actually close that because we don't want to jump around too much. But we need to tell CMake where to find that. And that's easily solved by having Zlib installed. In my case, I already do. And it's installed in this path right here. And as you'll notice, it's actually very similar to what we're building for our library. Uh, CMake uh, is, is using the standard paths here. And there's the lib files. There's the include directory that has the public headers for Zlib. And anything else, there's some doc files like man pages and all that. But that's all the stuff that the Zlib library um, has installed on my system. So if I go in here and I actually paste that path, oops, and once again, we're going to switch those slashes and we're going to hit generate. What it's going to do is it's going to generate our build and it's actually going to find Zlib. And in this case, everything is configured exactly as needed. So what we needed was our very useful. We found that library. And uh, then we're producing an executable based on these uh, source files that we provided here. And we're actually linking to our library. If you recall the namespace that we specified for our configuration, our targets rather, uh, if you remember, and I'll just quickly show that again, when we created our expo, our targets, like our core configuration for our library, we said that we want all of our targets to be namespaced with very useful colon colon. And here you see that in action, we're saying that we're trying to link to our library using very useful colon colon, that's a namespace, and the actual target has got the same name as the namespace in this case. So what CMake is going to do is it's going to then link our library to the executable here. And if we actually go ahead and build it, we'll see that we're going to actually compile or we might not compile because we're actually using a debug build, but we're actually using an installed version of our, uh, uh, sorry, a rather a release version of our library. So uh, I'm going to actually show what we can do here. Uh, and it's good that we ran into this error is we're going to change this to debug. So now we're going to rebuild the library for debug. And we're actually going to install a debug version of our library. We're going to say debug. And everything should be up to date now. 
So if we go here and just for good luck, we're going to delete the cache and reconfigure and make sure everything still works. CMake is going to reconfigure our project. And if we rebuild, we're going to see that everything is built successfully. And I probably should have dwelled on that error a little bit more because it's a little bit cryptic. Uh, and actually, let's do that really quickly. So what I've done is I've reinstalled the release version of our library and I've rebuilt our, uh, our test project here just to see that error. And without really looking at every little bit here, we can quickly see that there's mismatch errors in the linker phase. And what that tells me automatically is that there's probably some mismatch between the uh, what we're actually building for, in this case, a release build, and uh, one of our dependencies that we're linking into our executable. We're statically linking our library into this program here. Uh, and there seems to be a mismatch between what the linker is getting and what the linker is expecting. Then we can build and that error should go away again. And that's it. Now, if we actually run this program, uh, we'll see that we get amazing, which is exactly what we expected. So our program is working correctly and uh, we're able to call into our code. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you found this video useful. I hope it leads to more people understanding how to create shareable and easily usable code so we can all take advantage of each other's work. Uh, if you found this educational and helpful, please consider subscribing and definitely hit that like button. I appreciate it. Thank you.